Okay, so I've been active with indoor. All right, so I'm going to show you what I've been doing, what I did this summer. Now, um, I'm going to explain, well, basically what I did is I got into varial pitch props. So I'm going to show you what that is and explain it. Now, the regular prop is a fixed pitch prop, but one of the problems we have with rubber is that it has a lot of torque at the beginning, right? When the rubber is really wound up, really wants to untwist, and then the torque drops down later on, okay? Now, where I'm flying, for example, in T-neck, uh, you really only have 32 feet. It has what we call a dirty ceiling. It's, it's girders. It's horrible. You almost always lose the plane if you go up there. So you got to keep it below 32 feet. And the problem is, you know, you can zip up right away, but then that's it. You got to get into the cruise phase, otherwise you're lost in the girders. Now, the way modelers usually handle this is they use props that flare like this. Okay, this is one of my F1R props. And you can see that there's a more area in front of the spar than behind it. So this way, when you launch it and it has high torque, the blade's going to twist this way a little bit and have higher pitch, which slows it down, which number one, that's good because you get longer time. And it also keeps it from climbing as high. Okay. And then as the rubber unwinds, you know, the blade kind of just twists back to where it was. So the pitch speeds up again. I mean, the, the prop speeds up again. Okay. Now the main limit, so this works, and this is what modelers have used for many, many years. And, uh, but the main limitation of this is you really can't get that much twist. All right. You can get some and it definitely helps. No question about it, but you can't get that much. Okay. Um, so with the variable pitch prop, you can get a lot more change. All right. And that's important. So let me show you that. And I actually did it in the middle uh, and then the small and then the large, I kind of did it backwards. But uh, let me just show you first with the largest one. And I think first I'll explain how it works so you know what we're talking about. So this is the biggest one. This is for Penny Plane, which is pretty big. And uh, in fact, uh, I made the next one after this heavier because you need uh, Penny Plane has a minimum weight of 3.1 grams. So I needed the weight. OK, but anyway, this will show you all the components. And let me try to do the best here so you can see what's going on. Now, if you look at this, so first I have uh these are this is uh, you know tubing here okay and um that's where this goes in so these pivot this is where the prop plugs into here all right and the main components are the spring and this screw holder here so that's kind of what i want to try to explain so you can see right now that you see this bar this is the drive bar on the bottom and that moves look if i twist it you see that that's when it's changing pitch Okay, and why does it go back there? It goes back there because this spring is pushing it back. And that's what you call low pitch position when it's back in there. All right. And the spring you can see, um, or maybe you can, I'm sorry if you can't. It, it just hooks on one end here. You can see it has a couple of wraps and then it actually goes into this screw. You can possibly see, let me move it around a little, might help that it, it actually goes into the screw. I actually drill a little hole in the screw so the spring goes in there because that lets you adjust it. This is a screw adjustment and I'll explain that in a second. All right, so that pushes it back. So what that's doing is pushing it back into what we call low pitch. Now the thing about the screw is if I tighten this so it's pushing the spring this way, it makes the spring stronger and so it goes into low pitch sooner. So how soon you want to go into low pitch, you can adjust with that screw. And that's crucial, and that's one you have to have on every single one. Now, the other ones, uh, screws you can get rid of to lighten it up later on. In penny plane, you don't need that. You can see I made this is pretty wide. And this is, uh, I'm sorry, I should have looked it up. It's a special kind of foam. You can find all of this. If you go to Hip Pockets and stuff, you'll find it. I also have some discussion of uh, building this in a little penny plane thread, uh, thread I have called VP for penny plane. So if you look that up. You'll see I show pictures and I discuss this, okay? So first I just explained how the spring is there and the spring adjustment. You could tighten it or loosen it with that. Now the next part is the high and low pit stop. So you can see right now when there's no tension on it, you see, and I, I hope you can see this. Let me show you this, that it's pivoting, you see? So this is the low pitch adjustment, how far you let it go back in the low pitch. And here I have it almost all the way on this one, but you can put this screw in and make it so it can't go into as much low pitch. That you have to find out when you're flying. And then you can see when the rubber's all wound, you see it goes like that and it hits this. This is the high pitch screw. So that stops it. So in other words, you adjust that 
to turn. If you go into too high a pitch, it's just going to flounder and fall. It's not going to do anything, okay? So you got to adjust that to get the right high pitch. And these are things you do with the field and, you know, you adjust when you're flying. Let me show you one of them in the penny plane prop. This is a big prop. It's 17 inches, so you could probably see it good. And there it is. Looking forward to flying this. Okay, I just got out one session so far. And then I'll show you with the blades in there. Let me just twist this. You see? Let's do it like that. You could probably see that uh, the blade here, that's low pitch, and then there you go. And this actually has quite a bit of throw. It's going at, the low pitch is like 21 inches, and then the high pitch is like 40, 50 inches. It's incredibly high. Okay, so I actually need to stop there. Now, when I was figuring out how to make these, um, I, uh, you know, it took me a little while. I had to get the carbon fiber tubing, and then all I actually do is just glue them and bind it a little bit. And I didn't, uh, you know, uh, VP is legal for penny plane here. That's why that's my latest uh, venture. I think I'll make a video about that. And it's also legal for F1L. I have one in the background. Uh, I'm sorry, not uh, for F1R, which is also in the background. But F1R is very light and delicate, so I didn't want to start with that. That's the smallest, you know, hardest to make one. So I, I thought, I have a bunch of F1L sitting around. Let me make one for F1L, even though I have to stress, it's not legal for F1L. So you can't fly with a VP prop, barrel pitch prop in F1L. Okay, it's not legal. It's legal for F1R and it's legal for penny plane. Okay, but I just did it because I had never made a VP prop before and I had to figure out how to do it. And I also wanted to get some experience flying with it. And I already had a couple of F1Ls ready to go. This is back in March and we were flying at that point. So here it is. It's the same as the other one, a little bit smaller. You can see the driver is a lot smaller here, but it still got, has the high and low pitch screw and it's got the spring and the spring screw and all that. And this was fine, except there's another problem, all right? Uh, the Penny Plane uh, VP weighed about 300 milligrams. That's fine. Penny Plane has a minimum weight of 3,100 milligrams. And you actually need the extra weight. I had to put a little lead tape on one to get it up to 3,100. But F1L and, um, you know, uh, well, F1L does matter. It's not for contest anyway. But F1R has no weight limitation. You can make it as light as possible. And mine's about a half a gram. And people have made it less than that. <laughs> they made it 400 down to almost 300 milligrams since mind blowing. Okay. So weight is a crucial factor. And what I found out is that the one for the F1L, in my view, it was just a little too heavy uh, for F1L. It's like 130 milligrams, something like that. And it's mainly because the driver here, you can only get that so light, even though I'm using that rower cell foam core, it's like the lightest and things like that. These are graphite tubes. It's It still was too heavy, okay? So what you can do in that case, and I kind of, this is, you know, other people have had this idea, is you can get rid of the driver and you just replace it. So let me show you. Oh yeah, I'll show you in the F1L. It's a little bigger. And that's what I did. And that got it down close at 100 milligrams. So that was okay. You can see the, you still need the spring. So look, in this case, what you do is you glue a little piece of balsa there and you thread it. And that's where the screw goes. You have to get a little threader. And you see the screw there? Okay, it's still there. There's the driver bar. All right, it's still, you know, you can still turn it and then adjust the pitch. And on the other side is where I drilled the hole and mounted the spring, if you can see that, okay. So you still have the spring adjustment, you need that. But you can see the red, and doing it with just a little piece of balsa like that is probably the lightest you could possibly do it. That's why I did it that way, all right. Uh, Joshua over at J&H Arrow has a hubby did this way, and that's basically where I got the idea from for that. And then what you do is you just use a little, you still need the high and low pit stops, and you just use a little wire that you put on the balsa, so you're adding very little weight. The driver is heavier. This is just a little piece of wire, okay? And I'm hoping you can see it as I rotate it here. It's hard to film, talk, and do the whole thing all in one shot. Uh, let me maybe turn it a little bit. And um, what that does is, see, you can see there's a wire there, and it stops it. I'll turn it. Well, I have to hold the screw to turn it. Let me see if you can see that. I'm not sure, but you turn it and there you go. It hits the wire, that's the high pitch, and then it goes back, that's the low pitch. And if you want to make adjustments, I just get a little pair of pliers at the field and I make adjustments. So that gives you the lightest possible hub, basically. Okay, and I actually went out and flew with this a bunch of times. It was, it was good, it was fun, you know. 
Haven't done it before, but it's still a little heavy for F1L. I don't know if it's really worth it. Now, finally, I got down to the F, what I originally had planned, which was the F1R. And you hear, I'll hold it up next to it. You can see it's smaller. Okay. Uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, what do I have here? Here's the F1L. Yeah, that's it. So it's a little bit smaller. If you just, oh, try to get that up. Okay, you can see I used the balsa thing. There you go. And uh, here, I have one in the, with the blades in. So let me show you that. So here it is. And let me hold the screw and then I can twist it a little bit. So you can see, well, maybe you can see, I don't know. <laughs> the blades rotate a little bit. So you get some nice, it's not as big as the penny plane to throw. And again, I'm just using the wire stop here as well, okay? So that's another thing I'm really looking forward to this year. Now with my F1R before, I've gotten around 14 minutes, but I'll tell you, I only got out twice with this. The first time I had 16 and a half, and the second time I had 17 minutes, six seconds. So I'm already up three minutes by using this VP hub. So this really makes a difference, all right? I think I could probably get up to 20 something if I work with it a little bit. So that's a VP hub. And if you look at Hippocket and other places, there's lots of info about how to make these. There's articles about it and things like that for the most part. Okay. And uh, I, I could show you how I do mine, but that would be another video. But VP Hub's a lot of fun. And what you do basically now is when you launch the plane, it's in high pitch. So it's going to just be going around. It'll climb less. Sometimes it won't even climb at the beginning and then it very slowly starts going into here I'll show you with this one into lower pitch. It's actually slow. You know, it'll when you launch it You can look you can see it's all the way in high pitch But then if I turn it this way, it's all the way in high pitch But then as the rubbers loosening up, it's just coming back a little at a time It's going to lower pitch. See so you want that because this way you climb up and Then you go into the cruise phase and then you know after that you're gonna be sinking down if you go into the lower pitch, it kind of speeds it up again and, and it'll keep you either coming down slower or actually some modelers adjust it. Now that's what you can use the spring for. When does it start going into low pitch? Some modelers actually adjust it so it's in high pitch, climbs up, it cruises in high pitch and then it starts coming down and then it goes into low pitch and it'll actually start going up again. They actually get two climbs, okay? Um, so I have to fool around with that myself. Right now with my... F1R, the, what it did is it went up in high pitch and then as it was in cruise, I could tell it was slowly going into the low pitch and it extended the cruise time. That's how I got that extra three minutes so far. Okay, so this is VP, a little bit more advanced, but really worth it. Okay, a couple little things I forgot to mention. Uh, one is you, I had to work a bit on getting the right size for the spring. That's important. So you got to see what previous modelers have used. They usually mention it on the plans. And I had to play around with that a little bit myself. But I think I've got it now. Uh, the other part is it's all held on with a little piece of tubing on the end. that You just put a little tap of glue on there, believe it or not. And that's what holds the whole thing together. Now the other thing you might have noticed is that I cut off the screw head, all right? Now you want to do that one to save weight, right? For F1R, you want it as light as possible. The other reason I do that is I don't like to use a screwdriver because if you put it in, you slide off, everyone does that, you're gonna damage something. So what I do is I cut them off and then you just flatten the end a little bit with some pliers. You might be able to see that it's kind of flat on the end. And then you take a piece of brad tubing and squeeze it here, flatten it, so you have just a little oval opening, you see? And that way with the oval opening there, you can just, you know, slide it right in there for the most part. Okay, like that. I need my reading glasses. And uh, then now I can turn the screw to adjust it. I could turn it in and out. All right, so I like this little device. It makes it lighter and it's also a little safer to use. Well, it's probably the last day of flying this year in the armory. As you can see, I'm here completely alone. There'll probably be some other guys showing up a little bit later when I'm ready to leave. Uh, unfortunately, we only have half the armory. You could probably see there's a net in the middle. So the RC guys fly on this side and the rubber guys fly on that side. I'm going over there now. All right, here's my F1R with the VP hub. Here's the VP hub. 
You can tell it's, it's a little breeze in here. Okay. So we're about ready to go. Uh, this is brand new. I had one flight last week. It was 11, uh, let's see, what was it? It was 1626. No, 1623. So oh, let me hold the other guys are here. Well, here we are climbing up there. I hope it's done with the climbing, but it's hard to tell. Barely see it. Let's see where we are. Boy, we're getting close to girder height. So I hope that's it. I think the climb is done, huh? It's looked a little closer to the wire, but it's hard to tell. I set it so it kicks into low pitch later. Hopefully we'll be okay. It's a little nerve-wracking flying in here. I think we're okay though. Looks like it's cruising. Thank God. <laughs> this could be a perfect flight, we'll see. All right, I, I need the pull, so. Well, we're over 10 minutes now. I'm still doing okay. Let's see how long this cruise goes for. But it's looking good and the drift is not bad today usually i have to do tons of steering this wasn't too bad but it'd be nice if it goes a little more into low pitch to keep it hanging there we'll see All right, get okay, maybe one more flight in here. This looks good. I think trim wise, we're doing good. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop the cameras. Good, good flight here.